in 1981. When the whole country was going to United States, I came back. Everybody called me as a fool, and maybe I was a fool. Because if I was intelligent, I would still be running a very major corporation in Silicon Valley. Half of the classmates of mine owned Silicon Valley. We were the pioneers in those times, the IITNs, especially from IIT Kanpur. And so they all are very major players in Silicon Valley. And you, I don't know how many of you heard, but if you go at their biota, you'll find either they are from IIT Kanpur, Kharagpur, most of, mostly from IIT Kanpur. So I thought I will talk about my Junoon, what made me come back. And I'm not unique, and I'm sure that all of you have something in, in yourself, the same Junoon that I had. And if you do that, then it will help you to do something wonderful with your life and for the country. I'll tell you a little bit what our institute does, and then I'll talk about the challenges that are there for you, and finally, how we can all work together for producing a wholesome society and a great life. How many of you would like to go abroad? Raise your hands. Be honest. Come on. So large number of you would like to go abroad. Why do you want to go abroad? Give me some answers. Why abroad? Huh? Money. Quality of life. Opportunities, modern infrastructure, they are all opportunities. What else? Why can't you do the same thing here? Why do we want to run away from this country? Huh? So, who is responsible of lack of acceptance? Who is responsible for the lack of poor infrastructure? Who is responsible for the poor environment? It will be you. We have to make that infrastructure, that environment, everything so that you stay in this country. Not because you are forced, but it will be a great place to stay. And that is what I call as a nation building. Nation building is not the infrastructure that you will build as a part of the construction industry. Nation building is an environment. And nation building is what we would like to strive. And that happens when all of you do something which is wonderful, which comes from your heart, and which really helps in improving the quality of life, not only for yourself, but your surroundings. So, we all work for happiness, irrespective of what we do, people have different definitions of happiness, but we all work for happiness. And you know, some may have money, some work for fame, or whatever it is, but ultimately our goal is to work for happiness. Generally and accepted, and that's what you talked about. A good job, happy family, basic creature comforts, healthy and wholesome environment. And these are all part of nation building. Happiness is a state of mind. When you have a very powerful mind, when you are happy, the whole world looks like a happy place. When you are miserable, the whole world looks like very miserable. And that is what we need to talk about. How to make a powerful mind so you become a very sensible a person who is at peace with himself or herself and that is how it gives you happiness. Giving back to society also produces happiness. How many of you have done something that you felt it was giving back to the society? Raise your hands. What do you mean by giving back to society? 
What is social service? Anything that you do to make your neighbor happy, six foot round your di diameter, something that changes for the happiness, that is the, you're giving back to the society. You're not concerned about the whole country. You should be concerned about simply six foot. <coughs> Gandhiji taught us that philosophy that you change yourself a little bit round yourself and the whole country will change. And that is what we should be looking at. Creating a happy and wholesome environment is what I call nation building. And that is, a, that is what we will talk about. Create an environment where you would like to live, raise your family, and feel that if it is a place that you would like to be reborn. I believe that all of us believe in reincarnation and wouldn't it be a happy place that you will be reborn in the same place, but, and provided you make it really nice. I spent many years in America, and 1970s America was a very great country. In fact, the whole world used to look towards the United States, and I met a large number of Americans, and all the time they said, if I have to be born, I would like to be born again here. That was their pride in their country at that time, it's a very different culture now, very different country now. But that is what I would like all of you to do. In fact, you are the ones who are very important people in future, who are going to be nation builders, because you will be making bricks, mortar, concrete. That is how you build the structures and the walls. But you don't change the environment. And this is what we are going to talk about, how you change the environment to make it as a great nation. Now, all this comes, as I said, when you become happy. Happiness is a state of mind. And that comes because of Janoon. What is Janoon actually? Janoon is defined as obsession, passion, even madness. When you are in love with your girl or a boy, it is a Janoon. You don't think about anything else. Time vanishes, everything vanishes. You are all the time focused on how to be with that person. That passion is what you should be bringing into your life for doing anything that you do. And that is yoga. Because that is how you start focusing on mind. When you get out of the, your SMS, when you get out of your social networking and focus, then that is how you start developing a very powerful brain. And that is what makes you um, a happy person. Janoon helps focus on the work at hand and produces a very powerful mind. It's like a yoga. Yoga is nothing else but thinking about a certain subject or object for a very long time. Concentration. Concentration comes out of doing yoga or meditation. And when you have concentration, then you can solve any problem in the world. Nothing becomes impossible and that is how the great discoveries have been done all over the world by people who had tremendous concentration. It is helped by meditation. It is helped by curiosity. In fact, one of the saddest thing I find among youngsters, they have no curiosity. When I ask some people about certain things, you know, the internet is full, you know, it's an infinite resource of information. But people do not have any curiosity because you are spending all your time in sending SMS getting SMS. In fact, you become like a fish out of water if within one second you do not get the SMS message back. Is it true? We are different from animals. Animals react. We as human beings have the power of contemplation, reflection, and a very deep thinking. But we have become like animals. We react all the time. And if somebody sends you a wrong SMS or a bad SMS, immediately you have to react. Our whole society is full of anxiety because we are continuously reacting. If you are traveling in a, on a two-wheeler, you will not stop for a second if there is a traffic jam. You will try to get in between because of tremendous anxiety. And that anxiety ultimately reflects in everything that we do. And that is what is creating a very sad situation in our country. And if we have to build a great country and a great nation, and this anxiety has to be reduced, 
And that can be reduced when you have the Janoon, when you can focus very deeply on certain things, and that is how you make a very powerful mind and produce happiness. It makes you spiritual, since you think deeply. Spiritual is nothing very numbo jumbo. It is nothing to do with religion. It is going deeper on a project, on a subject, and thinking deeply. And when you do that, it is you become spiritual. Spirituality is beyond time, caste, creed, nation, or anything. It's a humanness. And I want that if all of you think deeply, you will become spiritual. And that is, to my mind, the first step in making a very happy person and ultimately a great uh, helping in the nation building. Janoon helps in getting happiness and a desire to do things out of ordinary. I had the Janoon. I left everything. I was a fast rising star in the uh, United States. Two and a half years teaching on the, on the uh, faculty uh, with a tenure and uh, left everything. Just madness. And I'll tell you a little bit about that. All of the things are forgotten, even time. When you are with a, your lover, there's no time. Time vanishes. Time is a very subjective process. When you are with your, um, uh, uh, your uh, person you really like or you're doing something very uh, uh, deeply, there's no time. Time simply vanishes. When you are, have nothing to do, when you are bored, time seems like a huge burden. And that happens when you think deeply and create a very powerful brain so that you can focus on anything and that is what will make you a very good human being. And when you do that, it will also ward off pressures from family and peers. When I came back, I came with a Janon. My father was very unhappy. I went to one of the best English schools in Lucknow, then went to the top IITs in India, IIT Kanpur was the top IIT in 1960s and 70s. In fact, IIT brand name had not come. When, when, we, when I went to the United States, they only knew about IIT Kanpur. They did not know about other IITs. The brand name came in, came in 1990s. And so it was a very top university. Then I went to one of the leading universities, University of Florida. And then the Janoon to come back. So my father was very unhappy. But when you have the Janoon, you don't think about these pin pricks. You say that you want to do something that you really enjoy and that you really are passionate about. So all the pin pricks go away. And the world is moved forward by people who have genome. All the history of the world, if you, read the, if you care to read the history of the world, it is by people who were single-mindedly <coughs> focused on a certain thing. The world told them that it will not happen, but it happened. So as I said, I was born and raised in Lucknow. Janoon to become an engineer, I was uh, very inspired by railway, especially steam engine. Now the children are not, are not inspired because there is nothing to see. There is just a big uh, 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 dibba. What happens inside is something else. But when there was steam engines, you could see the steam coming out, the, the, fo the force on the wheel, the piston, everything. So it was very inspiring. Then on 13th birthday, my father went to jail with Gandhiji. He was uh, part of the 1942 movement, so he was jailed for two and a half years. And that may have also been a part of the inspiration that he gave it to me. So on 13th birthday, he gave me the Gandhiji's autobiography. I used to come first and second in my class, and the Gandhiji's autobiography totally changed me. I read, read and read about that biography, autobiography started suffering my school, but was smart enough not to do that. But it really changed my life. Then I wanted to be an engineer, so I went to IIT Kanpur. My JE was 29th. That was a very high JE. And uh, but again, the Janoon. Janoon to do something. And when I was got into that phase of, in the age of 13, 14, I got very much involved in doing meditation, focusing, it provided me a tremendous power of concentration. And when you do that, because I, what I'm talking about is from my own experience, and when you do that, and I'm not a unique person, I'm sure that each one of you can do that. It is just that focus 
and focus on anything and that will make you, your concentration very high and you can do wonderful things. Then IIT Kanpur, naturally the cream of the cream of India taught in IIT Kanpur. Some of my professors are Bharat Ratan and big shots now. And uh, it was a very interesting thing. So the tremendous amount of knowledge that uh, I gained. And the most important thing I gained was the humanities. Whatever I am today is because of the humanities courses I took in IIT Kanpur. I took nine courses. In fact, I would suggest um, uh, Nikmar to focus also on humanities. Humanities gives you a very well-rounded education. And whatever I am today is because of the humanities courses that I took in IIT Kanpur. In fact, when I used to teach in the United States, I made it sure that my students took English literature and other courses. And they used to be, they, they used to be fight because they never wanted, they said they are engineers. I said you will become better engineers by taking humanities and understanding a lot of things. And uh, it's a very remarkable thing if you have a good library. Naturally, it's not, not even necessary. Today, the internet allows you a tremendous amount of exposure to humanities. Money somehow never got entered the vision field. And when you are focused on the solving the problems, these pin tricks don't matter. When you have nothing else to do, you only think about money, the package. I get large number of students, the first thing they ask is how much package they will get. They have never, never even asked what work they will do. I always thought that the chaprasis are the one who always ask how much money they will get. Because chaprasis, chaprasis can be told to do anything. But you are engineers. You are going to be the future managers. Think about what you will do. Why you want that money. What exactly is the purpose. And that will give you a certain perspective in life. I did my PhD in mechanical engineering under a very world-renowned professor. He came as the head of the US delegation to India in Sovereignty, then taught there for two and a half years. Also met my wife, Dr. Nandini Nimkar. She is also a distinguished alumna of UF. In fact, she is much more distinguished than I am because she has a plaque in the center of university. There's a very, very few people have that. There's a center, there's a plaque in the center of the university, the main place where her name is ingrained. And uh, she's the only Indian who have that. And a fit of madness and arrogance came to rule India. And I've written about this in my book, 1970s America and Indian Student Journey. And I have given that to Dr. Ire. I think you have put in the library. Please read that. Madness that I will do wonderful things not knowing the ground reality. When I came to Fulton, Fulton was a place where I had to make a long distance phone call. I would sometimes hop on the bus, come to Pune, four hours journey and make phone calls. But there was a genuine. There was so much of, you know, there was nothing there. It was an overgrown village, dusty roads, dusty places. After coming from all over the world, going through the best schools, it was a genuine. And I think the same genuine all of you can have. It is just that probably you are not directed, but think about it and you can do wonderful things. Be foolish. Wonderful things are done when you first jump. I jumped, then I found out where have I come. And then you do wonderful things. Because then you start looking, what can be done, what is possible, what can I do with my life, what can I do with my knowledge and this is what I did. I had this tremendous arrogance that I will change India. India did not change, it changed me. After all, this is a very ancient civilization. Gandhiji and so many people could not change. Who I was, very foolish person thinking about that. But it really changed me. What happened? Living in rural India taught me humility, spirituality, sustainability. And that is what is, I think, a very important lesson. Since 1981, I have tried to practice all these, but not always successful. So it is a work in progress. And I think that is how it should be. All of us strive and work for certain goals that we achieve, that we have put in life, and that is what 
we should be striving for. But these are the higher goals. They are not for money. In fact, a lot of people, a lot of my classmates, they made tons of money. They, you know, they all went to MBA. In fact, my, my I, I graduated in 1972, and that was the year when IIM Calcutta had just been set up. And so, 40 of my classmates went in Thok to IIM Calcutta. And I used to always tell them that what will you do in life? You will sell dibbe, oil, paint, and this is what they did. They made tons, tons of money. And now they all come back and tell me that you did a better thing in life. But it is a different, everybody has their own choices. You will make that choice. What I am telling you that you have, whatever choice you have made, always think how you can help in make, making this country great. And by doing that, you will make the environment great and you will also help the poor in the rural areas. The country can only progress when bright engineers, scientists and managers with dedication solve the problems of rural India. I am biased because I live in rural India. 60% of our population still lives in rural India. And all of you should help. How many of you have come from rural India? Background. Farming background. So what are you doing with the MBA? Why don't you go back and help develop the rural India? Bring it up. Because when you bring the rural India, the whole country will be. And that is what I would like to give as a message. I and my wife run this small institute. We'll talk a little bit about this institute. Nimkar Agriculture Research Institute, it was started by Nandini's father in 1968. So we are more than 50 years old. It is registered as a trust and uh, we have uh, 35 section 12, we are recognized by the government of India for doing research and development and so on and so forth. You can read all of that in our website. Our website is very, very uh, extensive and you will find out all what we do. Here we have 110 acres of irrigated farm, around 4,500 meter square of building and workshop. We work in the areas of agriculture, renewable energy, animal husbandry and sustainable development. And these are all the buildings uh, that we have. We try to use the best tools of science and technology for solving rural problems. And the focus is on technology development and also extension work for the farmers and etc. We have a total staff, very small institute, total staff of 25 is 7 scientists and technologists and we always work in shoestring budget. I have found out that you do not, do not require too much money for doing R&D. You require tremendous amount of thinking, very deep thought and very innovative processes. We get funding from Government of India and other uh, agencies. In agriculture, we work on sweet sorghum. Do you know sweet sorghum? Jawar? It's gore jawar. So our scientists, they bred, you know, in 90, we introduced this sweet sorghum in India in 1970s. We got the material from United States. We bred with the local Madandi variety. So we produced a sweet sorghum variety which had a grain which you could use for bhakri. The stem is as sweet as sugar cane, so you can produce alcohol. In fact, the whole process of alcohol from sweet sorghum was started by us. In 1980s, we set up the first solar powered distillation plant in the world. It was a pilot plant where we produce ethanol from sweet sorghum, and now the government of India has a very major program of uh, ethanol production from sweet sorghum, sorghum, etc., etc. So we are very proud that we pioneered that. We also developed that sweet syrup, so sweet juice into syrup and we sell that in the in fact we are the only institute or place in the country which sells this sweet sorghum syrup. It is used for pharmaceutical industries and uh, sometimes it is also goes abroad. How many of you have uh, taken suffol oil? You know suffol oil? Suffol oil comes from our variety. So safflower we did a lot of work uh, till 2017, 40% of all the varieties released in India came from our institute. Um, 
is again we did a lot of work in taking you know our focus has been that every part of the uh, green plant should be utilized for human consumption i am telling you about the r and d part what we do basically then we started the work in animal husbandry in 1990 in fact we did a lot of work on um, uh, sheep and goat in fact the sheep program in this country is now basically an nri program in tamil nadu andhra pradesh in uh, karnataka most of the program is the pioneered by our institute and they the government does it and then finally we are now looking at precision agriculture i am giving you this idea because i you know you never know you are going into construction business but somehow you will become interested if you start <coughs> looking at the rural construction that what can be done and we'll talk about it that what are the challenges and i believe that the precision agriculture the autonomous machines they are the great future for all the engineers our energy work we worked on household cooking and lighting lantern alcohol stoves for which we got very major national and international awards then ethanol from sweet sorghum as i said and the power generation we have a very uh, half a megawatt gasifier in our campus we have we were the principal author of the national policy on biomass in fact all the biomass power uh, plants that are there in the country they have come from our uh, uh, study in 1990s and so we are very proud of uh, that and how many how many of you have seen electric cycle rickshaws we are very proud to say that we are the pioneers and the inventors of electric cycle rickshaws in 1990 In 1990s, when nobody, not even China or any other country, thought about electric cycle rickshaw, we developed the electric cycle rickshaw, and it was naturally copied. And uh, we have not gotten any money, but it is now everywhere. And uh, but people who know that where it came, they slowly, slowly are now writing that it started at NARI and etc. But it gives a very nice feeling that your ideas can go and really make a difference. <coughs> that is the impact so a very small institute like ours can still have an impact provided you focus on solving the problems provided you think very deeply and then you can do anything so you don't require very much and then we are now working on the solar water purifier for school children because school children do not get good water so we developed very unique solar powered systems for cleaning the water and rain water harvesting and all our work is written on romance of innovation uh this is my book and it is also given to uh, dr hire but it is all you know all i have made all my books and material available free on the internet so that it should be freely available for people to read because i believe that the knowledge should be freely available that is the essence of a human evolution impact based upon our work in uh, uh, power plants 2500 megawatt based power plants have been put in the country national sheep tuning program based on nari r and d work use of sweet sorghum for ethanol and syrup production in india as we discussed e rickshaws as i said use of ethanol as a household cooking and lighting fuel in dozen countries in africa and latin america it's a very interesting story when i developed this uh, ethanol lanterns and stoves we got this major award in sweden the queen of sweden gave the award to me and who was the, uh, the next person who got the award tesla motors so nari and tesla motors were given this award so it's a very it was a very prestigious award it was the same setting as a nobel prize because the queen i had a my sat in the dinner with the prime minister of sweden the um, uh, uh, future queen and the uh, sony dignitaries it was a very interesting thing how a rural uh, institute and uh, working in rural area you rubbed shoulders with the royalty wonderful work provided 
you have the junoon and you have to you can think deeply about certain things. Then as we were working with the poor people, we found out that they were spending a lot of money in medicines. Their, their health is very poor. And we found out that their health is poor because they are eating very poorly. To a poor person, the best medicine is food, not the medicines. If you eat properly, you don't require any medicine. And so we developed the whole concept of rural restaurants. And this concept helped Amma start her Amma kitchens in Tamil Nadu and the Shahi Bhoj in Maharashtra, which is right now running, and in so many other states. So this was also another major impact that we did. In fact, the funny part was in 2012 when I put out this concept of uh, rural restaurants, I said that every thali should be 10 rupees. Today the Shahi Bhoj still is 10 rupees. They have not changed it. So it's a very interesting thing how these things come up. And uh, now it is, uh, if my last account is that one crore thalis has, um, uh, you know, were given in this type of thing in the last one year. But the most important thing is the frugal innovations. You have all heard about innovations, frugal innovations, and we did that. So in less than four and a half crores, all the inventions that I'm talking about, it came. So you do not require too much money. You require genuine and thinking rightly, and that is what it is all about. We have got many, many awards, national, international, and the very the interesting part is that we are probably the only small NGO with two Padmashiris. One was given to the, our owner, uh, our uh, um, uh, you know founder, Mr. B. V. Nimkar, in 2006, and this year I got it. It's very interesting thing because you know, Indian Institute of Science and so many of these big organizations they have Padmashiris and the Padma Award, but no NGO. This is the first time the small NGO like ours has this. So what are the challenges? Because this is what we will talk about. 60% of India's population lives in rural areas. Rural folks have same number of neurons as everybody else. Their aspirations fueled by mass media are also for good life. You go, they, you know, now they, 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 are, they know, uh, everybody has a smartphone, they know what is available. And it's that aspiration which really is driving everything else in this country. Improving the quality of life is a real nation building. That is what I want each one of you to do. Because you are the future of this country. If you do a good nation building, that is how the future of the country will be really be, have, be good and it will be safe hands. You are going to have a career in building industry. So, Physically, you are the real builders of the country because you build the mortar and the uh, concrete and etc. But create a very decent low-cost housing with modern amenities for rural poor. Create lifestyle based upon needs and not greed. And that is the greatest challenge. Everybody talks about low-cost housing, low-cost housing. What does a house does? If you are given a house, is that enough for you? You want so many other amenities in that. The people in the rural areas are not different than you and I. They also want amenities. So you have a great challenge to totally change the structure of this country by providing good amenities, but for their needs, not for their greed. This monkey shanti should not be lost. Most of this havas, most of this greed all the time you are looking for money. If I ask, how, how much, how many, uh, what is your pay packet that you will get? We talk about pay packets. How much pay packet you will uh, get when you get out of this kind of, uh, of your MBA? Tell me. Huh? What are the pay packets that are normally for the MBAs? 10 lakh, 15 lakh, 20 lakh? Have you looked, have you thought about what will you do with that money? Have you done any calculations? Money is not an end in itself. In fact, that is the biggest problem in our country 
we are continuously talking about accumulating money. A money which is not used is a dead money, is of no use. When we think about the quality of life, think about what you would like to do in life, and then start your calculations based upon that, what you would like to have. If you have the fear, all the time you are working on fear, because your neighbor will tell you, oh, you do not have this, your somebody else will tell you, oh, you um, should have that, then I think you are in the wrong profession. You should be in the profession of life insurance agents, because they work on fear. You are the builders of modern India, and you cannot build modern India by starting with fear. You will build modern India by starting with tremendous umang and by thinking that you can do anything with the tremendous power that you have with your brain and that you are young and then you, you can do something with your genome. So think about that. We require excellent engineers, entrepreneurs and we need excellent R&D and high technology for rural areas. In fact, one of the things that we have shown in our institute is that by doing excellent high R&D, one can do a lot of very interesting things for rural areas. As corporate managers think of reducing profits for rural infrastructure, you can make profits, but think about reducing the profit when you talk about rural areas, and that is your contribution to society. And giving back to society produces happiness. So what is the way forward? Increase your intellectual capital, this is uh, your impressionable age. What you do here at this age will define you for the rest of your life. Strive for excellence in whatever you do. Practice spirituality. It will help you reduce greed and make you ethical. One of the most important things that I think is missing in our education system is teaching of ethics. You can be, you are taught all the things. You are taught about the mechanics, the whole uh, engineering, everything. But you are not taught about what is ethics. Because if you have the foundation of ethics, then whichever place you will go, you will do very well and you will do it very nicely. And ethics is something that should be taught in every course. It should not be a, a subject, it should be taught in every course at every step. And that is how you will become ethical by becoming spiritual because when you start looking very deeply, thinking very deeply, that is where you start becoming very ethical. My, and I have lived a very sustainable life and there is a small uh, write-up on how I live. Spirituality will also help you focus on the challenges, help you develop your own, be attached to the story of India and help solve the problems of this great country. And Indians do wonders abroad, why not here? Half, you know, do you know the, the Microsoft, Google, and there's so many companies in Silicon Valley, they're all run by Indians. Same Indians who, who go from here, born and raised, educated in India, and they do, do wonderful things. Why can't we do it here? As somebody said, ecosystem. You are the one who's going to develop an ecosystem. And if you do that, that is nation building. So you are the future of this country and so help it become great. Be associated with NGOs. I'll be delighted to have some of you as uh, interns. We do get interns from IITs and even abroad. And so it will be very wonderful to spend some time, six months, eight months in our institute. So let's work together. A happy individual is the first step in nation building. That's what we talked about. Mantra of India's development should be spirituality with high technology. My latest book is titled that, Exploring the Mind of God, How Technology Guided by Spirituality Produces Happiness. Read it. It is also available on, on the internet. India has huge problems and it is better to solve them rather than those of Western nations. So don't run away. This running away from problems is because you are afraid because you have fear, be fearless. And if you do that, then you will do wonderful things with you, with your life and for the country. And let us all build together a great India and Nari, our institute, would love to have fright, having few bright engineers and entrepreneurs. And how Nari and Nikmar can work together, we can 
think about it. And when we all work together for common good, that is nation building. And I'll leave here with a small story. I'll end this talk by telling you a story, a tale from our ancient scriptures, the Puranas. It is a typical Indian story of a sage and his disciples. The sage asks his disciples, when does the night end? And the disciples say, at dawn, of course. The sage says, I know that. But when does the night end and the dawn begins? So the first disciple who is from the tropical south of India replies, when the first glimmer of light across the sky reveals the fronds of the coconut trees swaying in the breeze, that is when the night ends and the dawn begins. The sage says no. So the second disciple who is from the cold north ventures, when the first streaks of sunshine make the snow gleam white on the mountain tops of the Himalayas, that is when the night ends and dawn begins. The sage says, No, my sons, when two travelers from the opposite ends of our land meet and embrace each other as brothers, when they realize they sleep under the same sky, see the same stars, and dream the same dreams, that is when the night ends and the dawn begins. I feel that when you, the privileged students, together with all of us, will help light up the lives of rural population through technology and resources, then it will bring in the dawn of a new and prosperous India. Thank you very much. Thank you for enlightening speech. It is a pleasure listening to you.